this um, cliche that you start with a white blank piece of paper, uh, but it's true. And I must confess that I go through hell at the beginning of every piece because um, it's like, you know, a mountaineer um, standing in front of Himalaya or huge mountains asking himself, well, am I prepared for this? Uh, do I really, am I fit enough? Will I have the endurance to go through this whole process from the beginning to the very end? Um, am I, um, do I have a clear image of what's going on inside my head? You know, in trying to answer these questions, every time I answer one question, a new one comes up. And I try to follow my instincts probably more than mathematical um, uh, structures, which of course are always somehow lurking in the back of my mind. I can't help that because music and mathematics are, you know, many ways the same. I usually, uh, I start with sketches and I have a pretty uh, shady, uh, vague idea of the, um, as the Italians say, dramaturgia. This is impossible to translate, I find, but the dramatic uh, um, line mm. of the whole piece, I know if it's going to, how it's going to feel more than its actual shape. <laughs> Jazz is this kind of thing, this thing with a very definite um, sense of, it own, of its own roots and its own heritage, and yet it's it's rootless, it, 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 or rather it's it's geographically rootless in, in many ways. But is that part of the appeal for you? Does it? Did you find something within that that, that you absolutely that the dislocation of being? Yeah. You see, um, you know, <laughs> one of the advantages of being a little bit older than when you're, you know, 17 or 18. I mean, you know, when you're 17, you don't worry about things like roots and family and tradi tradition, my God, I mean, it's, you know, you want to leave all that. It's really, you want to even, uh, you know, there's this famous um, question, how much of the tradition do you have to know in order to destroy it? Or, it's, you know, how much, um, has, if you consider yourself avant-garde, how much do you have to know about the guard to be avant la garde, you know? I think only recently I became aware of the fact that probably, you know, going back to the very first question you asked, why do you compose, is that um, I really felt and still feel quite homeless where I am. <clears throat> and I guess, uh, music is is the strongest uh, and most um, intense uh, way of trying to create mm. a home so i became really aware of uh, you know traditions in the plural form not only jazz music but also in folk music and classical music when i was away from all that, that and as far away as you could possibly get you know, really experimenting with um, the very um, avant-garde elements of music that only consisted of noise or whatever you want to consider as noise and on the verge of total silence. Well, the German word is Wurzel Klänge. Wurzel is root, Klänge is sounds. So root sounds or resonant roots or sonic roots. Um, I, you know, going back to the question of performer and composer, there's a third profession inside, you know, a musician. Many musicians also teach. Sometimes they just teach from time to time, like master classes, sometimes they teach for a living. In my case, it's um, more, uh, actually on both sides, I like to do uh, workshops and master classes, but I also like to teach. And I teach children from the age of, I'd say six, seven, up to my oldest 
pupil is 78 now. <laughs> so, um, I very much like to pass on, first of all, what the little bit I know about music to the next generation. But at the same time, I think there is a whole universe to be learned by whoever teaches. If a teacher is not a student himself, he's a very bad teacher very soon. So Wurzelklinge is actually a lifelong project going back um, to the question, what of my, well, actually several questions. One question is, where are my roots? How can I find them? How can I dig them out? How can I make them? Uh, uh, how can I, I, I grow, let them grow in the present and in the future? And how can I have my kids, my students, uh, my pupils participate in this process, this process, uh, process of growing music? So I started to collect um, Celtic country dances ever since I was you know, a kid. Um, I set some of these dances to music. I wrote a lot of new material based or inspired by these uh, country dances. I put it aside for many years. I uh, went back to these um, roots again. And now I really am determined to uh, write a whole cycle of books for various instruments, for violin, for harp, for um, clarinet, for flute, for recorder, and different ensembles, and of course the piano. Um, and I'm not afraid to be associated with, you know, what Jerome de Bron had once asked, oh, are you going to be the Irish Bela Bartok? <laughs> At that time, I didn't know what he was talking about. Uh, that was in an interview for RTE. Now I have a faint idea what he meant. And I also, I'm, you know, I can kind of follow the idea that with the, the situation of Ireland as an island and being away from Donau Esching and Darmstadt and this whole hype of what was called new music mm. and the ideology behind it that you wanted to get as far away from all those associations associations to um, folk music as far as, as possible but having went through this whole process I'm no longer afraid of that and I don't have to be afraid of that anymore so now I feel free to use these elements but also to combine them with you know the well-prepared piano and other elements of so-called avant-garde music uh, and make them uh, and make them as interesting as possible for the new generation and uh, also coach teachers who want to teach these pieces to their students so just before I came to Ireland I had a meeting with uh, one major publisher so touch wood um, that the series of Wurzelklinge will um, be published from next year on, and a whole series, not just one book, but you know, a whole series. Mm -hmm.